Hey everybody, my name is Nathan Freeberg and you are watching the Oregon Brewery Running Series show. If you are a runner, if you are a lover of beer, if you are a lover of really anything related to Portland, this is a place for you. Today I am joined with Ben Dobler, the Director of Brewery Operations and Brew Master here at Laurelwood. He is a brand new brewer, just started here a few months ago, brand new to the beer industry, so he's really learning. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, ben, ben has been around beer since, according to my notes, 1993. Uh, yeah. Is that yeah, when you started scrub, uh, scrubbing the scum off the tops of kegs? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. That was, was, was that at Widmer or was that at Bridgeport? Uh, that was at Bridgeport. Bridgeport, yes. okay. Yeah. Is that like the mailroom of the brewing industry is scrubbing kegs? For the most part, yeah. That's kind of the, the entry level. <laughs> Um, it's kind of a good proving ground. So you, if you can maintain and, and be efficient, pay your dues yeah, there. Pay your dues, yeah, exactly. totally. Yes. Well, as you know, we have a couple of free promo codes for you. So we're going to be running here at Laurelwood on August 12th, 2017. And if you'd like to save $5, you can click on the promo link in the registration form and enter Laurelwood five and you can save $5. And if you want to run for free with us, we have another promo code for five free entries, but you're going to have to wait for that because I think people just watch the beginning of these for the free codes <laughs> free and codes. they skip out. Uh, so, yes. But we are going to sample some beer as we go here. So yes, we are. why don't we start with the first one? And by the way, if you ever want to come do a sampling of beer, I highly recommend Laurelwood because look at these pours. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah they, they, these are the brewer samples. <laughs> this is incredible. Um, so I asked Ben to pour three samples, three that kind of uh, highlight what, they're do, what they do here at, at Laurelwood, sort of their range, if you will. And so what are we starting with? Uh, we're going to start with uh, a relatively new beer um, for Laurelwood. Um, we're actually going to be releasing this in cans um, in the next couple months. Um, Ooh, okay. It's called uh, The Wood. Um, it's our house lager. Um, so this place is kind of known within the locals as we're going to go go to the woods. So yeah. we, we thought it'd be nice to uh, kind of name sense. a beer um, after that. So it's a super light, easy drinking um, Slightly lower on the uh, caloric level, um, okay, and definitely lower on the uh, alcohol level as well. So sounds like good post run, very much so. Beer that yeah, you can have. it's a five percent, a little bit of a hop flavor in there, a little bit more than a domestic lager, okay, um, but kind of drinks very similar. Very cool. Well, let's uh, cheers. Yeah, cheers. That's good. Do you have any um, tips when you're sampling beer that you you uh, help? That we got to share with everybody, myself included. Yeah. Like, what are you what are you looking for besides? Hmm, that tastes good. Or well, so it doesn't for, taste good. For, first and foremost, um, I'll always just look at it. I mean, obviously, sure. our eyes tell us uh, a, a lot of things. Um, yeah. You know, scary, <laughs> safe. Right. Um, you know, etc. <laughs> and fight uh, or flight. Yes, fight or flight. And uh, you know, from there, if it's a nice bright beer, I'm going to expect some kind of bright flavors to come out of it. Right. If it's a little more uh, turbid, kind of like uh, the the Berliner Weiss that we have here, I might expect some more uh, intense flavors. Okay. Um, and then from there, um, just give it a quick smell. Um, give it the smell test. Um, Make sure smells like nothing. beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Smells like it's beer. Good. And then you know, lastly, just kind of take that sip and. Do you swish it? Do you do any of the wine? No, no, no. We don't. We don't. So wine will typically kind of they want to introduce oxygen into uh. to kind of open up the wine, quote unquote. Um, for us, uh, oxygen and light are two beer killers, if okay. you will. The so um, yeah, the enemies. Yeah. So um, more, it's just a matter of how does it finish. Um, did I have to really like work? to drink that beer um, because <laughs> that, that, that's, that's the antithesis of what we're trying right. to do. You want it to be smooth and just go down. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You, you want to, I mean, you're, me. you're, you're ideally drinking in a social situation right. and you don't want to have to sit there and have the beer be uh, work. <laughs> right, it, exactly. We, we failed as brewers if, if the beer becomes work. So how do you know if, it's, uh, if it is easy, if it, if, it's just co if it just goes down smooth? Uh, you know, I think it's kind of no one of those reflex. things. Well, you know, that's, that's obviously going to be the first one, but sure. ultimately it kind of you know revolves down to that social experiment of you know am i just drinking and then all of a sudden oh wow that that beer is empty that's I, gone i need another one yeah. um to, to me that's a really good beer yeah you don't yeah you don't be sit there halfway and be like oh oh yeah i gotta, I gotta, I gotta finish, I gotta this, finish thing. this yeah, yeah. so well this is a good beer uh, i think i read recently that you 
Do you prefer lagers? Is that, yes. is that yeah. your... Yeah, very much so. Um, mine as well, so thank you for that. Yes. Uh, I, there's, there's a subtle um, level of complexity within them um, that is typically kind of underappreciated, I think. Mm. Um, mainly, I think, kind of the stigma of the, the big domestic lagers um, have put on that, that, you know... The Budweiser's and the... Right, 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 with all the, the negative connotations that, that those have taken on. Um, right. However, um, you can make those beers um very complex and frankly as as everyone now realizes they're they're very difficult to make sure because you're you're not you're not hiding behind a lot of hops behind a lot of alcohol um it's 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 fairly huh. a naked beer if you will sure that's interesting i never thought about it that way before you can't really yeah it's just there it is and there there it is if and you so mess any, it up a little yes, bit it it hmm. it's very detectable and so that's where you know as much as a lot of people don't necessarily want to agree with the Bud Miller and Coors of the world are pretty amazingly made beers, considering the size and scale. I don't think scale. you can say that. Is yeah, that? yeah. Well, you know, it, it might be taboo in some circles, yeah. but um, you know, I, I appreciate uh, you know all beers and what they bring to the table. Totally. Well, and there's a reason that they're popular. I mean, obviously, they have massive marketing behind yes. them. Yeah. But if nobody liked them, they yeah, yeah. All the marketing in the world can't make people drink right. it. Exactly. So, yeah, no, just super simple. Um, it's a great beer. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So now, something I'm curious about. So you're the director of operations here. Well, first of all, what does that mean? Um, so, Slash brewmaster. So what's the director of ops? Is that all the boring business stuff? Yeah, you know, um, it, it's kind of all operations okay. uh, encompassing. So um, helping, you know, ensure that um, supply chain, logistics, ah. shipping, receiving, um, you know, and then all the way down to the brewing and, sure. and cellaring of, of the beer and just making sure that all operations are running as effectively and efficiently as possible. It's the side of it that the sort of the novice consumers don't like to think about right. that, you know, <laughs> oh, the boring stuff about actually getting the ingredients <laughs> yes. to go in the beer, actually making the beer go out yes. somewhere else uh, so that we can consume it on a different, yeah, it's, a it's, different it's, day than right now. It's definitely the unsexy side of the business. Totally. And it's, it's funny because uh, it is a side of the business that, um, a lot of people don't want to talk about and, right. and, and using just the, the B word that I just used business. <laughs> yes. I mean, we, we are a business. We, we want to be profitable. Exactly. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's a beautiful, uh, allure to brewing that it is this artistic in the garage in the yes, basement in, in the garage and yeah. there's definitely you know, an aspect of that, but, oh, um, sure. you know, for me, uh, beer and music, um, run in so many parallels huh. That, you know, your local brewery is like your local indie band that nobody had ever heard of. And, you know, it's Nirvana. And then all of a sudden Nirvana starts growing and then they're not playing at the local club. They're now playing at the arena and now they're on. No, world nobody tour. likes them. No, you can't yes. be a Nirvana fan anymore. Right. Yeah, right. You exactly. know, they sold out. Right. Um, you know, Metallica, I think, is a <laughs> is a prime example. Yeah, that's a great. That. Uh, that's that's a great example. I heard an interview with them recently that. You know, they're saying that we're basically the same band, right? And like, I would imagine these breweries are basically the same yeah, breweries. They, they, they just have more resources to make, right? And and they've gotten older, consistent. And exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, speaking of older, or not older. This is a jerky segue, but <laughs> you're at uh, uh, Widmer for 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Widmer just, is no small, no. no small brewery. No, I got uh, you know, I got very lucky um, with that transition. Um, I was at Bridgeport Brewing for about three years prior uh, to my start there, and um, Bridgeport was you know Portland's original, and uh, right. it was kind of awesome to have the ability to go from you know, Portland's first brewery, the craft brewery, to Portland's second craft brewery, um, in, <laughs> in in the Widmer Brothers, and um, the just the support that that brewery had to offer and the growth that it provided um there you know the grass really and truthfully wasn't greener and mm -hmm. um so you know their staff retention there has been remarkable um there was a large group of us that were kind of the class of 95 96 um hiring and there's still probably about 10 to 15 of those employees wow. um, around there. That says and a lot about the company culture to have that exactly. much retention. Yeah. And, huh. um, you know, that was basically we were all hired on when they really kind of expanded and then sure. exploded with the like new facility. Mid 90s. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And um, because prior to that, from 84 up till basically 95, 96, you know, they didn't bottle anything. They were draft only. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. And right now, you know. It's amazing that they were able to grow, grow so that much 
much so without much. bottling yeah, stuff. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, right now it's kind huh. of interesting because Boneyard um, mm. out of Bend yeah. is kind of following in that model. They are draft only, no packaging or anything. And they're seeing astronomical yeah, growth yeah. with that brand. Yeah, that's, I didn't know that. My father-in-law, that's his favorite brewery. In the last nice. couple of Father's Days, I've tried to find something for him. That's, yeah. that's why I can't find it. Yeah, yeah I think they might be doing crowlers out of their little okay. tap room. Um, Interesting. Yeah. But so, no, the, the, the Widmer ride was um, uh, amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, I would not trade the, the knowledge that I learned there. The talent of from just top to bottom is, is pretty spectacular. Well, it must be to be that successful and large right. and cons consistently yes consistently so so then you've been at uh, laurelwood here for six months yeah roughly? just six, yeah, roughly six months uh, six seven I mean, months yeah, six seven months i think okay. i started right around thanksgiving okay and they, i mean they're not a new brewery but they're yeah we're 16 I mean, 16 years old yeah this they're year. yeah. they're not nearly as old as woodmers or yes. the bridgeports or those right um What's it like being the new guy? Like it being so long in one place, you probably knew all the quirks and personalities, and now you're the new guy. Yeah, it, it's the it, new boss, no less. Yeah, it's in some, it's, it's, some ways. It, it's interesting because um, I I enjoy brewing. I enjoy being you know boots on the ground and all of that. But sometimes you get lost in the the desk work, the paperwork, of and spreadsheets, the, uh, <laughs> and the paperwork. And so um, the previous brewmasters that that have come through here we're all very much uh, brewers first, mm. office um, second, and kind of where the business is and where the business is going, that office business side is, is pretty important. Gotcha. And so when we went through kind of the interviewing process, you know, that was what they were looking for and wanting was someone to come in and really kind of focus on efficiencies and mm. kind of start to dive into the minutia. Of, so do you of have to bring them like a spreadsheet and show them how, uh, yes, <laughs> essentially, how yeah, do you I make mean, this work? Yeah, yeah, the previous uh, previous brewmaster um, that was in here um, really built a ton of kind of beautiful templates and spreadsheets. Mm. So, you know, processes were there. And what's interesting is, you know, again, the, the scale of Widmer to here, you know, Widmer was 250 barrel batches. So, you know, a barrel of beer is two kegs, right. uh, 31 gallons. Um, Which is a lot of beer. Yeah, a lot of beer. <laughs> um, but, you know, that scale of 250 down to 20, um, kind of simplifies the process, but there's just other added complexities right. in there of, oh, so you guys do it this way. Well, why don't you do it this way? Oh, well, we only have these parts or these materials uh, in order to do it this way. A little more bootstrapping going on here, maybe. Correct, than, correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. MacGyver. Yes. <laughs> Lots of duct tape and... Yes, uh, yes. Swiss Army knife skills. Exactly. Yeah. Which, which is awesome because um, that really forces um, strategic creativity, if you will. Oh, of, yeah, absolutely. Of, of being diligent that, you know, you're, you're observing good manufacturing processes. Sure. But, you know, as well, um, working with what you have. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, if you read any stories from Nike or Google or any of those, not, you know, huge companies now, but when they're startups, there was something about that, um, that grittiness of like how we got to, you know, we don't have this much money or this many resources to just figure it out. Right. Is there anything along those lines that you've already in just six, seven months been able to implement here? That's like, Oh, why haven't we been doing this for 16 years at Laurelwood? Yeah. I think it's, it's more just kind of, uh, co-opting of resources and just in the sense that okay if we're using water here could that same water get used here or if we're drawing oh, co2 from here could we you know then jumper it over to this tank oh, here nice. um so or really, re recycling of your own stuff almost. correct yeah. correct and and hmm. just kind of uh looking at how we you know rack down beer and how much beer do we need to store here versus storing at off-site warehouses yeah. and really kind of try to uh uh, just streamline the way, the way things Efficiencies, are Efficiencies. Yeah. Efficiencies. Yeah. Organizational it, effectiveness. Yeah, is, exactly. And you know, it's unsexy, Widmer, like you said, as unsexy as it is, yes. it's part of the business, it, right? It really is. <laughs> and Widmer, uh, Widmer was very unsexy, I guess, in that regard, because it was wildly efficient, which was awesome. <laughs> I mean, such a, again, yeah. and, and sometimes you just, you, you have to be taught that it, it doesn't just come in um, instinctually. Right. Right. Well, at some point they were figuring that out yes. as they went. Right. Exactly. And now they're, you know, writing, the books, you know, the proverbial right. books on how to do that in, right. in other places. So yeah. how, what would you say, um, and then we'll get to the next bit here. What would you say? So director of ops versus brewer, like ballpark percentages. Cause I know that you're a brewer, so yeah. you love doing that part right. of it, but what's like your, you know, it, it's 50, 50. Yeah. I would say it's 50, 50. Okay. I mean, it's, it's kind of one of those things too, that, um, 
smaller operations are, are typically you know, resource um, lacking mm. um, just in the form of, of bodies. And what's beautiful about Laurelwood is uh, for our size, we have the perfect amount of staffing. Mm. I have nice. uh, a wonderfully um, hungry young crew. Um, you know, we, when, when I first started, I was talking with my uh, lead sellerman and he asked, which, what is that by the way? I was reading about, um, so lead sellerman is, um, the keg scrubbers. Yeah. Yeah. He basically (laughs) focuses on all beer once it is made. So oh, storage so, and all that stuff. Yeah, oh, okay. exactly. Um, so we didn't realize that was a job. Yeah, That's we cool. we essentially um, brewers. I mean, we actually don't make beer. I mean, we make sugar water to really make it seem unglamorous. <laughs> um, yeast yeah, yeast is technically technically very... making the beer. Yes. Um, so we we provide you know a nice house for the yeast to grow. And, You're really and, making and, this whole brewing thing so yeah. <laughs> unsexy here, yes, Ben. Yes, yeah, I know. It's <laughs> just it's kidding. It's, it's fascinating. It's, it's the harsh reality. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, no. Um, so. We basically, brewers will typically for, focus on um, what we call wort production, fermentation, turning the sugar water, if you will, into beer. And then the cellar crew will take it from that point, um, put it into what we call okay. bright beer tanks. Yeah. So that's kind of clarifying it, carbonating it, making sure it's kind of in the final spec. Then they'll package it, whether it's going to go in can or bottle or... Um, so they're the real heroes tank. here as the oh, very much so. Yeah. Very much so, yes. The, the unsung heroes. <laughs> yes, that's cool. Um, so, you know, when, when you kind of start to look at that, um, when we were talking, um, I'm not really huge, huge on titles, but, um, in my opinion, you know, the title brewmaster kind of gets thrown around as, you know, I mean, Kurt Widmer was the brewmaster at Widmer (laughs) for years and years and years. Um, and you know, it was his company. Right. Um, you know, but to me, you know, the brewmaster title, can also be obtained through, you know, actual accreditation of attending university and oh, okay. really through learning educa- the educational process the, of the learning. educational, right. Okay. You know, it, it would be like me just coming in and saying, so yeah, I could be, I could become a brewmaster. Yes, you could become saying? a brewmaster, you know, and awesome. it, but you know, inversely, I can't just walk in and say, I'm a doctor. <laughs> you, <laughs> kind, you, you kind of have to go through an accreditation process. Yeah, a few years of schooling, I think. Yes. But. Um, and so, you know, I, 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 I don't take the, the title uh, brewmaster uh, lightly um, mm. when that gets thrown around. Right. Um, you know, a lot, a, a lot of people, it's, it's a badge, um, sure. you know, and, and I do do a lot of aspects of what a brewmaster does. Um, but there's a, a large percentage of that of just overseeing operations as well. So that's kind of where I think the director right. of ops makes Master it. of all brewery right. related thing. Yes, yeah. ex- exactly. And, okay. you know, um, really, again, having, you know, a tight knit small crew um, forces. I mean, when somebody's on vacation, you know, we, we don't just have. Yeah, somebody's got to do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you so. don't just stop making beer. I, no, I imagine yeah. <laughs> the beer keeps going. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, let's uh, try the second one. As yeah. much as I would love to slam this. Yeah, I, exactly. I'm yeah. going to a school function after this. Perfect. So. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, cheers again. Cheers. And what was this one called? Uh, so this is uh, a new a seasonal release that's about to come out. Um, this is our uh, Boysenberry Berliner Weiss. That's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. Boysenberry Berliner Weiss. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's a cup full of summer right there. Yeah. So it is wow. a, a German style uh, Berliner Weiss base beer, um, which we... That's went, really good, man. Went through the process of souring the wort um, in the kettle. Uh-huh. Um, through the addition of uh, a lactobacillus and then that basically acidifies it so it drops the pH down then when we get to um, a a target pH that we were looking for um, we then boil it that'll kill off the lactobacillus and now we have kind of an acidic base we'll ferment it out and then near the end of fermentation um, we're working with uh, Oregon fruit products um, out of Salem oh yeah yep I've heard Um, of them yeah big big uh, local fruit provider yeah Yeah. and um, they do aseptic uh, purees um, across strawberries mangoes boysenberries um, and so yeah then we added uh, added the boysenberries in um, near the end of fermentation and I let that last little bit of fermentation eat up kind of the sugars that the berries had uh, send it into the bright and, um, you know, we're Madness. serving it, uh, unfultered and, uh, okay. hazy, but you know, refreshing was really sure. what we were, uh, well, I was just this. about to say, I mean, if that was a, a, a really good, pretty good after run beer, this one, I mean, what we were saying earlier about that easy drinking, I'm, I yeah. could probably chug this like it's yes. a glass of water. This is very tasty. And that's kind of the whole, wow. the, that's the Berliner Weiss style is it's, oh. it's meant to be, you know, very refreshing. German, ger- must be a German, yep. Yep. something German. or other. Yep. Okay. 
And uh, so are these both new like beers that you have brought here yes. or made yeah. here? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Laurelwood has done some. Yeah, Laurelwood has done some uh, Berliner Weiss style beers in the past, and um, some lagers in the past. Okay. But um, this is just kind of my little uh, twist on. Yeah, that's on, that's on really styles. that's really good. So the fil- you said this is the unfiltered version. What would yeah. a filtered one be like? Just a little bit clearer. I think it'd be well. Yeah, definitely be uh, brighter in in appearance and probably not as uh, impactful as um, in the fruity. flavor. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and you could still in- achieve that. Um, impact of uh, flavor but you would probably just have to add more ingredients because right. filtration will kind of strip uh some of those qualities out sure so could, could you do this with any berry basically that you for, wanted for to... the most part yeah yeah and um that's something that you know we've been um we just start coming off of our uh spring seasonal which was just a regular raspberry um red raspberry wheat okay beer. and um you know i'm uh, again uh since you know we we are in the business of selling beer you know i i love (laughs) making i love making you know huge ipas and and all these eclectic styles i mean that that is the art right there but the reality is you know you're appealing to a very small percentage right well Um, especially maybe we can start talking about laurelwood now but i mean you guys are such a family friendly brewery i mean my family we rotate between here and Hot Parks. We have three yeah. kids, and so we have another other family. I mean, this is just like kind of our place to go when we're bringing the kids. Right. Um, not the only place. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you're with the kids, you don't want a seven, eight percent something. Exactly. Um, or if you want to, you know, do a couple of beers. So it's it's cool that you guys have are aware of that. Right. Um, how do you so pretend? You know, I don't know anything about Laurelwood. How do you describe Laurelwood to people? And this will be a good test for you. Six yes. months on the job here. <laughs> How do you describe you guys as a brewery, as a restaurant, as a kind of that whole experience? Because you seem to have an equal, well, I, mean, I have to be careful. I was going to say equal importance on the food and the beer right. and the whole experience. Some places, you know, are weighted one way or the other. So how, would, how do you describe Laurelwood as a brewery to, you know, an out of towner who has no idea. You know, I, I would say, you know, you, you've actually kind of hit on all of them. I mean, we, we <laughs> I just we, answered the yeah, question. You, 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 you kind of did. I mean, we are a family focused um, uh, pub uh, experience and great uh, play areas downstairs. Right. And, and I think, um, you know, uh, approachable uh, would probably be um, a good word to describe okay. us. Um, we're, we're not intimidating um, our beer selections. Um, you know, we're trying to create a pub experience so that anyone can come in and there's there's a beer that they're going to like if they right. like beer lots like this one right or that right one. or that one yeah. and you know um what we're starting to see you know in the last probably five to six years is you know fruit in beer is making a resurgence there was right. you know there was the you know, early 90s where the fruit beers were definitely the gateway you know gateway beers right. it was, the, it was, in, into the yeah. yeah 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 and you know bigger um, beers or whatever you the, call the, them the big thing you know i've talked with the team is you know we're brewers so we want to make beer flavored beer which i know mm. sounds weird but um <laughs> no i think that but, makes sense but yeah. you know um so that's kind of our first priority on you know the brewing side sure um, but then again back to, to what you were saying with the the family focus component um i want mom and dad to come in and have choice and ideally and responsibly, of course, I would like Always them responsibly. Yes, I would like them to drink more than one beer. Sure. And so, if we have a tap list of seven, eight, nine percent beers, chances are they're only having one. If, if they're good parents, they're yes, only having yes, one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I don't know how stressful the day was, but well, uh, there's, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> yes. of... <laughs> but um, so you know, that was one of the big things that um, when I first came on, a lot of our beers were in the higher ABV spectrum, and so I talked with the team and the pub staff, and I was like you know, we probably should try to knock down that yeah. ABV a little bit on some of these. It's a little um, easier here on these beers. Right, yeah. right. You know, just, again, to, to make them more approachable. And uh, because, you know, we go back and forth and, you know, you have to balance out beers that you personally want to drink or make beers that the public wants to drink. So right. there, there is kind that of is, that That balance. is a, a quagmire there. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it really is. Huh. And so, you know, I would say uh, a balanced approach would probably be a good description, sure. you know, for us. Yeah, um, I think that's, because that's pretty accurate. Because we, we, yeah. we can and we do have some one percenter beers. Um, and then, you know, then we have... Do you your, really? What's... Uh, you know, we did a... Uh, it's, it's not on tap anymore, but um, we did a Megafauna. Um, which is our oh. big imperial IPA okay. um, that has a pretty good following. Uh, Moose and Squirrel is a, a bourbon barrel aged um, kind of barley wine. 
uh, Imperial Brown style. Okay, yeah, okay, um, I've heard of those. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this last year um, we bottled a uh, a Flanders Red, which is a kind of a barrel aged sour uh, beer that typically takes uh, a couple of years to mature. A couple in of years, okay, yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. And then you blend. It's a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it uh, becomes it. You know, on small scale, it's very difficult to replicate. Sure. Um, huh. Because you typically don't have a lot of barrels to continuously blend from. Oh, and sure. There's maintain a consistent limited number. Yeah. Correct. Um, but you know that beer, uh, very much a one percenter, but. Um, the one percent that tasted it, you know, loved it. We actually won um, a silver medal at the uh, Oregon Beer Awards. Oh, um, congratulations! Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, yeah. With, with that beer, I so. know you guys have won a lot of yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of different yeah, awards. Yeah. It's, hard, it's hard to keep track sometimes. There, but. There, it, it, it is, but that was one of those awards that um, the team was really mm. excited about, you know, but then, you know, you've got the other side of the sales and marketing is like, okay, well that's awesome, but yeah. we don't have any more of that beer. Right. And now we got to have family beer <laughs> right. for everyone. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> we, um, you kind of, we were talking about a little bit earlier just in terms of, um, recycling stuff, but I know that like sustainability and organic is really important to Laurel. I know it is to many breweries, but you know, Laurelwood kind of puts that out front and center what is what does that look like exactly in the beer when you're making beer and how have you seen that coming over i'm not sure what it was like at woodmer but what is like have you seen a big difference and oh they're saving all this instead of throwing it or... yeah you know i, th I think it, it it comes in the sense that you know it, just inherently all breweries for the most part are very much um green if you will yeah. um you know because part of it is driven through well if i just dump this water down the drain um that's a waste that's money. Um, that's money. <laughs> um, so, you know, you do have that, that business, mm -hmm. you know, component in there. Um, we, we have kind of benchmarks that we try to strive to. And one way to look at it is the majority of every brewery is that, that kind of, that goal is, um, five gallons of water used to make one gallon of beer or five barrels of water used to make one barrel of beer. Um, interesting ratio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you, when you get on the the very large scales, like you know the the the, the Widmers, the Deschutes, the the Sierras, those guys can get down to about three and a half, three gallons wow. um, to one. Just because um, they're it's just larger scale. Larger scale, they have yeah. the infrastructure to build the reclamation equipment um, in order to utilize all that. Okay. Um, so you know um, we we try to strive for about that four and a half um, uh, barrels uh, to one barrel. Um, again, it's, it's, you, you have to kind of start to look at your footprint, um, sure. how much space What's is, realistic and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this recovery system going to take? Mm -hmm. What is the ROI behind that? Um, you know, how's that going to impact the environment? Um, and you good know, old environment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you know, it's, it is, it is good. I mean, you know, yeah. thankfully the city of Portland is, is all over uh, breweries with wastewater testing. Sure. Um, we, we send little to no yeast down the drain. Um, we recover as what much yeast. Uh, we incorporate it, um, with our spent grains that go out to our farmer. Oh, okay. so pretty much every brewer worldwide yeah, has, yeah. has a relationship with some with, farmer. Uh, yeah, with some farmer. Waste, exactly. Give it to pigs or whatever. Yes, yeah, yeah. Pig and cattle feed. A lot of drunk and, pigs out there. And the animals. Well, and that's that's the thing that with the yeast specifically. So the grain, there's. It's just uh, I, I equate uh, spent brewer's grain to like uh, Cheerios or Rice Krispies with a couple teaspoons of sugar. Okay. <laughs> Ver versus, versus, oh, you know, versus, uh, just having like regular grain or regular, right. uh, barley, okay. um, because it goes through the malting process because we've converted some of those starches into sugars. Right. Um, so the animals love it. Of course. But yeah. If you mix in toddlers yeast, would love that. Yes, too. exactly. If you mix in yeast and you just give it out to the animals, the animals are going to start eating it, but then there actually can be fermentation that happens. And this goes way back to when I first started at Widmer in the nineties, um, we were mixing in all our yeast, um, spent yeast with our spent grain. And the farmer was just letting his animals go ad hoc. And a lot of them were cows. Well, as I discovered the, the, <laughs> the biology of cows, cows don't have the ability to fart or burp. So they actually <laughs> so they were, have seven stomachs, right? Yes. And yes. And yes. Yeah. And they actually were having active fermentations and internally really? exploding because they had no oh, way to uh, relieve the pressure. <laughs> so the farmer lost a couple cows and then we, we, we had a conversation. 
it out. Yes. Yeah. And then we were quickly like, okay, so we need to keep these separate. You can monitor the feeding of, and um, yes. So unfortunately, cows cows were hurt in that experiment. Cows, (laughs) not intentionally, though. Not intentionally. Not uh, intentionally. (laughs) And beef tastes good, too. Yes, yes. Oh, that's, that's really interesting. Well, it's it's cool, though, that you guys, you have a, a thoughtfulness right. about that because there's natural waste and byproducts that come from that. So that four to one, four and a half to one ratio, then the, the waste or the spent water... Where does that go? Is that like so we we can run it in water yeah, yeah the so grass we'll, with it or? Uh, no we'll we'll typically run it into a, a collection tank that then you have the ability to inject um, CO two or a uh, alkaline um, uh, like a, a sodium hydroxide that kind of balances the pH out and gets the pH established. Okay. It's so chemistry then, there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then when you hit roughly, I mean, the city has, you know, their, their limits of what is acceptable to quote unquote discharge. Sure. To, um, to dump or whatever. Right. Yeah. And so we get it within those specs and, um, off it goes. Okay. And, and like I said, they come in and they drop in testing equipment into our collection vault. Do they and, just randomly show up and you don't yeah, know. Yeah. Or, yeah. They okay. just randomly show up and then basically they sample over a 24 hour period and uh you know they specifically don't tell you so you don't <laughs> curtail your mess business. around with it yeah, yeah exactly right right, right. Exactly. it's like oh the city's gonna be here let's stop right. doing this <laughs> let's hide all of the lead that we're dumping <laughs> right, into our water right, here i'm right. no, just kidding um well, let's try this last one here because i know that you've got to go to another another oh, thing yeah. meetings 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 you're not are you uh not headed to Hood River today? Uh, no, no, okay. no, no Hood River, unfortunately. Cause yeah, I did, you guys brew out there, right? Um, yeah, Full yeah, Sail yeah. does some yes. stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a relationship uh, with uh, Full Sail um, to get us into uh, all packaging, um, basically six-pack format. And we're actually in the process of transitioning away from um, Full Sail in glass. And oh, okay. uh, I almost uh, brought them up, but we're going to actually start canning. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, what, I saw some down in the yeah, yeah, yeah. What, back there. Yes, what we had um, in six packs. So the last beer that I brought, um, I'd be remiss to not bring is our uh, workhorse. Yes, of course. Well, so I was hoping you'd bring that. I brought, <laughs> yes, exactly. so we're, we're up here, we're in the, uh, the Sandy 51st, uh, uh, 51st and Sandy here in Northeast. Um, we're up in this little fun, is this a private room or just yeah, overflow yeah, seating yeah, or whatever? So we'll, we'll open up the upstairs on, uh, Thursdays through, um, Saturdays. Okay. Um, it is kind of overflow. Um, so I, I pulled some pictures off your walls. Yeah, it's, it's uh, so yeah, Workhouse was the, the best tasting IPA in the world or something. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Stuff? That, that beer, that beer has won. Or in no Ameri- America. Yeah. 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 That, this, this was, you know, IPA before IPA became very, very right, popular. Exactly. And uh, so um, we were putting this in uh, six pack format. Cheers. And, uh, yeah, cheers. Oh, yeah, it's a classic. It is. Um, and now we're going to uh, move it into cans. And um, mm. Mm. we're uh, also going through uh, a very uh, kind of subtle rebrand, um, kind of refreshing okay. uh, some of the packaging and all of that. You know, after you know, 16 years, um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of time, it's time to, for a, yeah, yeah. A, a little bit of a, a few refresh. different breweries are doing that lately. Yeah, exactly. The older ones. So here's, here's a question that I like asking cause it's such a subjective answer. How do you define like what makes a good beer? Like, so this one, the best, what was it? Best IPA, best tasting IPA in America back in 2014. How do you determine that? Is it just the subjectiveness of the judges? How would you explain to a novice like myself? Like that's a good beer. That's not a good beer. Yeah, I, I, I've judged. Million dollar question, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. I've judged a, a fair amount of uh, beer competitions, and there is um, typically stylistic guidelines that that you are given to help eliminate subjectivity. Just you read the guidelines and you taste oh, the beer and That's, does huh. it fall within okay. these guidelines? This is the definition. So is it this or the, is it pretty black and white binary? Right. Yes. Of this or that? Yeah. Or? Um, but now what you're starting to see is uh, subtle interpretations of styles, evolution. Um, I mean, because that's that's what we do as a society. We right. we, we evolve of always. And um, and so when we, you know, when you say what what is a great beer? Um, I mean, I think the best response to that is the, you know, the beer that's in my hand. <laughs> exactly. That's what a lot of people say. This is the best. Yeah. The, the, this is the best beer. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think what's great about the evolution of, of craft brewing is, um, we've, we've pushed the boundaries and we now can provide a drinking experience hmm. for almost everyone. Um, if you're a wine drinker, we can make, 
you know, berry flavored beers yeah. that, 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 that could appeal to a, a softer sure. palate, um, which if, is still very good. Yes. <laughs> yes. If you're a bourbon drinker, you know, we can do the barrel aged bigger beers that have that bourbony vanilla caramel aromas and flavors. Um, if you really like the bitter, we can provide the, That's, the big yeah. IPAs. Um, you know, and this is, this is a big, like you classify this as a big, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's seven, idea. yeah, seven and a half percent, um, 70 IBUs. Um, so it's, it's definitely on the, it's pretty big. Yeah. 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 But you know, again, I think, uh, when you, when you get down to it, a really good brewer can make a bigger beer and it doesn't taste like that. It's stealthy. Ooh, um, tricky. Yeah, is, that, yeah. is that part of the art of being a brewer yes. is how do you, yeah. How, yeah. How can, how can you, you know, mask a 10% ABV beer? Um, because I mean, again, if you, if you think about it when, when, you know, if you're drinking wine, you know, most wines are in that, you know, 12 to 14 percent ish range. Um, people who drink wine don't typically focus on what the alcohol of the wine is. No, never. No, no you're, you're, you're not like, oh my God, this is 14.5 percent or this is 13 point. They only have a half a bottle. In right, yeah. right. Um, but you can definitely drink a wine and be like, ooh, this is a little boozy. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of get that alcohol burn or you can get some of these kind of, I, I won't call them off flavors, but um, subjective flavors. Sure. And, you know, I think with beer, um, you've done a good job when you don't get those subjective flavors. Right. And again, you know, to, to kind of bring it all back, if you're drinking and socializing and then it's empty and you know, you're just yeah. ready to have another, that's check it off. That's yeah, a great check, beer. Yeah, that, that, absolutely. That's, yeah. That, that's, a, that's a great beer. And yeah, absolutely. you know, I, I, I don't like to jump on the bandwagon of, you know, bashing uh, millennials, but yeah. the millennial demographic that's coming in is completely shaking up, you know, all industry. Yeah. I just read an article that they're um, quote unquote ruining like, McDonald's, Budweiser, some of these large, yeah. you know, corporations because they basically don't want the, kind of this narrative that's been told for, you yes. know, decades and decades of sort of standard this, this, yes. this. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you can't market, market to them. Right, it's and, crazy. And, yeah, and, and they're very promiscuous with all their habits because there is no... I mean, you know, hearkening back to my grandfather, you know, I had, you know, one side of the family that it was just Coors in the fridge and the other family was Paps and, and you know, and that was it. That and was, that's that so was simple. What, yeah. Yes. That was what they drank. And you know, the, you know, unfortunately, you know, the flagships are slowly, you know, dwindling and dying and, or um, they're buying little companies yes. trying to reclaim some of that, right. which some people freak out at, but I don't know. Right. Uh, that's again, evolution. It's capitalism. And, and yes. It's capitalism yeah, yeah. And, and it's not sexy. No, no. <laughs> but you know, I mean, if, if I had the opportunity and somebody wanted to back the Brinks truck up to my place that I busted my ass building and growing, I mean, Worked that's the American 80 hours dream. a week. Yeah, exactly. As, as far as I understand it to be. Would, do you ever want to open up your own brewery? You like, know, is that a down the road? I've, I've thought about it. Um, there's, there's something comforting about knowing that I'm going to have a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> Let somebody else stay up nights yes. figuring out how to pay people. Right, right, yeah. right, right. You know, I don't have to do HR, you know, I don't have to do accounting, yes, um, you yeah. know, those types of things. So there's, there's something comforting about that. Um, but obviously there is the, you know, the allure oh, absolutely. Of, of being yeah. a small business owner. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think that people talk about is the bubble going to burst? Are we saturated? Um, I would actually, I would say no, as long as you hmm. find the right model in the right location, right. um, that's, that's going to work because I mean, look at, you know, go to Fred Meyers and the wine selection oh my goodness. and it's, yeah. well, it's overwhelming well, beer too. Yes. They're both, they're overwhelming. Yeah, yes. they're, they're becoming overwhelming. Yeah. And that's where I think beer is really going to suffer is if we become intimidating, if we become right. overwhelming yep. and, and, you know, frankly, that was kind of what we saw in the late nineties when there was a little bit of a shakeup and all these breweries were growing. And then we had flat growth from like 97, 98, 99. Hmm. Um, you had a lot of new breweries coming on quality was iffy at best, iffy yeah. at best and people it Oh, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. What, what is an IPA? What is, what is this brown yeah. ale? Um, and mm. so, you know, thankfully there, there was a curve of knowledge that needed to, uh, be increased. And, yeah. um, you know, I think finally we're there, but you know, again, I look at beer as very cyclical and I think we're finally coming down, getting back to kind of our roots. Um, because we, we are now roughly a 30 ish year old, um, you know, industry, which we're still very huh. young, interesting. you know, when you, when you think about it, but 
you know, 30 years is kind of a good cycle suppose, for, yeah. for well, I mean, you know, beer is what thousands of years old, right. but sort of the current incarnation, I guess yes, that's the thirties about right. Yeah. Right? And, and what so, know. you know, you're, you're, you're going to start to see, you know, some retro things yes. come, come out of it and, uh, <laughs> throwbacks to th- yeah, throwbacks. Yeah, and, and a lot of it is, already... um, you know, those of us that all kind of started around the same time are now getting into our forties and, you know, drinking 8%, right. I, double IPAs, 10% barley wines. That, that's a little more work. Uh, <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> so I totally agree with you. So going back to, you know, drinking, you know, drinking lighter beers and, it's you know, great. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, it's funny. I was just telling a friend the other day that I, I always feel bad telling people that are not bad, but just, you know, I used to love porters and stouts and like these bigger IPAs, but I'm like, I kind of don't anymore because right. I mean, all the things that you were just saying, it's, but all right, you've just given me permission to be proud of that yes. fact and oh, enjoy yeah, yeah. my, in, uh, yeah. what was this? The boysenberry? Yeah, boysenberry, yeah, Berliner Weiss. Berliner Weiss, yeah. Yes, oh, mouthful. Good. It is a mouthful, <laughs> but it's a delicious mouthful. Yes. So, yes. well, Ben, I know that you've got to get going. I just um, kind of want to ask you one more question. So you are a, are you, you're a Portland native? Yep. You've been here for... So I was born... Uh, born in Washington? Yeah, born, yeah, born, no, born up uh, off no. of Interstate there at the old uh, Beth Kaiser. Um, oh, okay. Uh, up there, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, just in North Portland. And then um, grew up um, across the river in Vancouver. Okay. And That's my nice. folks moved to, uh, back to Laurelhurst when I was... Oh, cool. Like a junior in high school. Okay. Um, so, so I finished, finished up high school over in Vancouver. Oh, you did? Okay, okay. Um, but then uh, was... Um, running track at Clark college and taking classes there. And, uh, at that time, my uncle was the head brewer at Bridgeport. And so he just called me out of the blue and said, Hey, we have an opening on the bottling line. And I was, I was 19 and (laughs) can't even drink yet. (laughs) Yeah. I couldn't drink yet. And so legally, you know, legally. And so I said, wow, this, this sounds pretty awesome. And, uh, um, you know, he qualified that with a of course you can't drink. I'm like, right. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Sure. Uncle. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, ended up, uh, you know, I, I got in at a time when it was very innocent. Um, everybody was really trying to figure it out. Sure. Um, and you didn't have all of the, the resources because all of the maltsters, the hop growers, um, the vendors for equipment were used to building, you know, Miller Coors, huge, they, yeah, huge like, breweries. Right. They, how do you, they, uh, how do you wait, scale wait, it wait, down? Yeah. You want to make 310 gallons? Um, that, that's, this doesn't make sense. We only have a thousand gallon tank. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it, it, it was very innocent back then. And, um, now, you know, you have Oregon State University, you have uh, UC oh, yeah. Davis, um, the like, Siebel Institute, you have uh, universities in Tennessee that are now creating fermentation science programs, and you have kids going to school to right. be brewers. <laughs> Learning it all right out of the gate instead of right. spending 10 years figuring it out. Right, right, yeah. right. And so um, it's... It's, it's, it's a good balance because you have a, a high level of academia coming into the industry. Mm. Um, however, academia hasn't really worked a hard day in their life <laughs> outside of studying. I totally. And, and, and so, you know, know you're talking about. getting yeah. them on a, on a crawler under a tank, uh, scrubbing, uh, oysters off of the bottom of the tank and, <laughs> and drains, um, you know, isn't very appealing it's because different. I mean, yeah. had, had I gone and got a college education, I might be questioning, um, life's decisions. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm scrubbing it, that scum off of those <laughs> exactly. that dirty keg over there. Yeah, totally. <laughs> exactly. So, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a good balance because, um, you know, uh, academia is needed because we are right. a business right. and, and, you know, it's not the, 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 the free wheeling like it once was of, you know, we'll kind of figure this out. Sure. Um, if you're starting up a brewery, you need to come correct. You need to, well, it's so much more competitive now. Yes. So exactly. there's lots to do. Yeah, yeah, totally. And cause just the market, the market has, you know, 90 other choices you, that you almost can't can. start and figure it out. You've got yes. to start at this level of right quality and production and whatever else. Right. Yeah. So since, I mean, since you've been in Portland for so long, what are a couple of your favorite must do things in the summer events or locations to visit restaurants, rooftops, patios, 
other than Laurelwood. Of course. Of course. Um, you know, really look forward to the Oregon Brewers Festival. Uh, yes. um, that's that's always a good July, time. July? Uh, yeah, third uh, third full weekend in July okay, is, yeah. is typically when that festival happens. And kind of the build up to the festival, um, there's a, a Brewers uh, golf tournament that we throw out at the Edge Field. Okay, um, that's, yep. On the, on the little par three course out there. Um, then you have the Brewers dinner. That's always a great time. Um, I do do a little cycle cross racing, although not, oh, yeah, fun. not, 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 not very physically fit, but, um, it's still fun to go ever, out ever, and get, you, you and get in the mud. Want. So, yeah. um, you know, definitely look forward to, uh, um, the fall, um, mm -hmm. fall series of that. Um, you know, I really do enjoy coaching track. Um, I didn't That's think fun. I was going to enjoy yeah. it that much. Um, I mean, my, my demo there is third through eighth grade. So I have okay. a very <laughs> wide swath of, yes. uh, of attention spans and, and, physical, and abilities physical abilities. And, and yeah, yeah. yeah. De dealing with children going through puberty is uh, interesting. Um, especially be. other people's children. Yeah. Right. <laughs> What's your own? I'm sure you can. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, but, uh, play golf and, uh, you know, actually this year I'm, I'm really excited cause I'm going to get back into kiteboarding. Uh, oh, fun. did that back in the early two thousands religiously before I was married with children and all that. And <laughs> Family's uh, ruined everything. yeah, chase, chased wind up and down the oh, gorge. That's um, fun. So, I'd love to do that someday. Um, yeah. That's really, really looking forward to okay. that. So, cool. you know, our, our environment around here is you know, you have the ocean You've an got hour everything. and a half away, the oh desert, goodness. snow, uh, my family skis. So it's pretty much paradise. Yeah, I mean, it, it really, truthfully I grew is. up in the Midwest. We've been out here about four years and I still can't even just like walking through Laurelhurst Park sometimes. I'm like, wow, where do I live? This is amazing. <laughs> right, right. Which and, is pretty and, incredible. And, and that's what I love about the Northwest is for the most part, all of the, the new, uh, uh, trance uh, blood that has come into mm. the environment people that have relocated from elsewhere there's kind of a, a, a similar mentality and and i kind of refer to it as like a pace of play hmm. e everybody kind of seems to to un understand to get yeah, yeah to get it they want to be they want to be here for yes. all those reasons yes, for that, all those reasons that we have learned to right love about right it. Yeah. right it's it's not like forcing somebody from chicago who's <laughs> just go 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 horn 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 gotta go gotta go right. um into wait, uh, wait a little more laid back a little more laid back wait, more. They, they don't honk horns here they just kind of <laughs> shake their fist yeah. in the air <laughs> exactly they just stay in traffic for a long time long time exactly yeah, yeah that's cool well ben thank you so much yeah definitely. i appreciate the conversation and i just realized i never gave the free code so if you oh, want to yeah. run with us for free this is good for five entries type in laurelwood underscore free that's all one one word laurelwood underscore free and you can run for free with us on august 20 uh 12th august 12th right here at laurelwood you can sample the lager yep. the boysenberry i've already forgot again berliner weiss boysenberry <laughs> berliner weiss and of course the classic workhorse ipa Perfect. so thanks again ben anytime have fun at your meeting we'll talk to you later definitely cheers all right cheers